her and his behavior with her sister uh, caused Dylan to project or fantasize, I don't know. I don't know that he actually did the ultimate things uh, that Dylan says he did. Everything you know about the filmmaker Woody Allen is wrong. He's not a pedophile. He's never molested anyone. He did not marry his daughter. The media is lying to you. Lying. This statement may shock you. But as a journalist who's worked at PBS, BuzzFeed News, Bloomberg, Yahoo, I cannot stay silent anymore. Not only is Woody Allen not guilty of any crime, he is the subject of one of the greatest public smear campaigns and miscarriages of justice by the media against a Jewish person in history. And I will prove it. There are two major accusations against him. One, he diddled his own daughter, Dylan Farrow, and two, he married his adopted daughter, Suni, as a child bride. Both are wrong. So wrong, in fact, this video will surprise you. I have nothing to gain by defending Woody Allen. In fact, I will most certainly be canceled for it. But if a critic questions why I'm defending a millionaire, I'm defending him because I don't base the value of someone's worth on their identity. What do you I do? report the facts. The facts? That's right. That's what I do. You ignorant. Miserable but excuse for a journalist. The attack that it's okay to smear Woody Allen because he's rich is the same bigotry of low expectations that many people took with the Central Park Five. They're young black teenagers. What does it matter if they're innocent or not? They're not important to my world, but the press and middle class people. But it matters if people are innocent, and the facts show they are innocent. So let's re-examine Woody Allen. The journalism industry failed him, because I discovered the actual story is wild. Way more wild than people know. The defendant is not guilty, but somebody in this courtroom is. First fact, did Woody Allen marry his adopted daughter as a child? Woody Allen did not marry his adopted daughter as a child bride. He married a woman named Sunni Previn when she was 27 years old, and they remain married today. In fact, they share two kids together and live in the Upper East Side of New York. This photo is not of Woody Allen's child bride, but of his actual children. He took his daughter to a basketball game. A fact his daughter had to message Emily Ratajkowski about. Hi, Emily. I just want to let you know this is a picture of me, not my mother. My father did not marry his daughter. So who is Sunyi besides Woody Allen's wife? Soon Yi was the adopted child of Mia Farrow. Mia Farrow, a famous actress during the 80s, has adopted 10 children, three of whom have committed suicide under her watch. A pattern that reveals Mia Farrow's mental instability and emotional volatility as a caretaker, but more on that later. More importantly, Mia Farrow was Woody Allen's ex-girlfriend when he started dating Soon Yi. He began dating Soon Yi when she was 20, and Mia found out about it by discovering nude photos Soon Yi had taken for Woody Allen. These nude photos made Mia Farrow apoplectic. She mailed a heart with a knife through it to Woody Allen on Valentine's Day. And what was Mia's reaction when she found out about Suni? She, she sent me a Valentine card, and there was a very, very chilling Valentine. Did she threaten your life? She threatened my life many times. She called me and threatened my, she threatened to have me killed and to kill me. Um, and, to, and to stick my eyes out, to, to put my eyes out, to blind me. Okay, no matter who you are, that is a whack Valentine to send to someone. But frankly, this is also a weird love triangle, to start dating your ex-girlfriend's adopted adult daughter. But nothing illegal occurred. Everyone was of legal age. Sunni was not biologically related to Woody Allen, or her adopted mother Mia, nor even living with Mia at the time she began dating Woody Allen. She was in college. It's okay to find the nature of the relationship unusual or uncomfortable. I do. I would never promote that relationship. But promotion is different than acceptance. Truly liberal people are open-minded. They claim to be accepting of alternative adult lifestyles and choices. But if you only accept people who make life choices you agree with, you're not liberal, you're a hypocrite. Woody and Sunni are adults. They have a family. I'm not gonna judge him. Is the relationship a little weird? Yeah, but Woody Allen didn't marry his own child. He married Mia Farrow's adult adopted daughter of no relation. So this accusation is verifiably false. I have the one the other room. You know, the other room may have a double bed in it. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, and I won't slide into the cracks. Uh, oh, is it two beds? It's two beds. It's two beds. Two beds pushed together, right? Yeah. Hmm. One O. Second fact, Woody Allen is a pedophile and he molested his daughter. Woody Allen is not a pedophile, despite, let's be honest, how goofy he looks sometimes, and he did not molest his daughter. Contrary to what the press would have you believe, 
This one accusation has been rigorously examined by lawyers, medical professionals, psychologists, and social workers, all whom have dismissed the allegation and found Woody Allen innocent, all of which I will detail in this video. Woody Allen has only been accused of sexual assault one time in his life, by Mia Farrow, and it came right on the heels of Mia Farrow finding Sunyi's nudes and giving him a heart-shaped valentine with a knife through it. She accused me of child molestation on August 4th, right? Right. And that I molested my daughter, you, you know, my, that my, I molested my daughter. And August 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, you know, the, the week after, she's fully saying, when do we begin our new movie? I'm going for my costume fitting next week. And I said, are you kidding? You're accusing a child molestation and you think we're going to just go on with the movie? So in this case, one of them has to be lying. But who is it? Here are the background facts. In August 1991, Mia Farrow called her lawyer to accuse Woody Allen of touching their six-year-old adopted daughter Dylan in the attic while she was shopping. The lawyer recommended Mia take Dylan to the doctor to document any signs of abuse. But when the doctor examined Dylan, she found neither signs of abuse nor trauma. Mia Farrow took Dylan to the pediatrician, but when the doctor asked her where she had been touched, the little girl pointed to her shoulder. So three days later, Mia Farrow returned to the doctor with a VHS tape. This time, she had recorded Dylan talking about the abuse in the attic. The doctor watched the tape, but didn't find it entirely convincing. It showed Mia repeatedly asking leading questions about Woody Allen, until Dylan seemingly responded the way Mia wanted. We know this because the nanny who helped Mia produce the tape later signed an affidavit recanting her support and revealing that the tape took two or three days to construct. However, that doesn't mean it wasn't true, and at the time, the doctor was obligated to report it. And so a legal battle ensued between Woody Allen and Mia Farrow. Okay, this is where it gets a little complicated, but I want to give you all the facts. We're going into the weeds, but it will be worth your time. Promise. There are three captivating facts about this case I want to draw attention to that'll help establish what really happened and who's likely lying. First, in 1992, the Yale New Haven child team through the Connecticut police opened an investigation on Woody Allen to determine if the accusations were true. And concurrently, the state of New York opened their own second independent investigation on Woody Allen. They interviewed Dylan, Mia, Allen, family, friends. Both investigations lasted over a year, and both the Yale New Haven team and the state of New York independently arrived at the conclusion that Woody Allen did not touch Dylan and is innocent of the accusations. To quote the Yale New Haven report, Yes, like a real journalist, I tracked down the original Yale New Haven report in its entirety. And I have it right here, so I'll just read from it. I'll read their words. It is our expert opinion that Dylan was not sexually abused by Mr. Allen. Further, we believe that Dylan's statements on videotape and her statements during our evaluation do not refer to actual events that occurred to her on August 4th, 1992. In developing our opinion, we considered three hypotheses. First, that Dylan's statements were true. Second, that Dylan's statements were not true, but were made up by an emotionally vulnerable child. And third, that Dylan was coached or influenced by her mother, Miss Farrow. While we conclude that Dylan was not sexually abused, we cannot be definite about whether the second formulation or the third formulation is true. We believe it is likely a combination of these two. But it gets crazier. During the court case, Woody Allen willingly took a polygraph test, which he passed. Mia Farrow refused to ever submit to a polygraph. In 2020, polygraph tests are provably unreliable. Did you actually steal these designs from Teddy Fresh? No, that's true. But 30 years ago, most people believed polygraphs were accurate. So the fact that Allen was willing to sit for one while Mia wasn't, I find salient. Now, a reasonable question to ask is, maybe Allen just paid off someone to give a positive test. But I actually managed to track down who administered the polygraph. It was a man named Paul K. Minor, who has since passed away, but was the former chief polygraph examiner for the FBI. Hey, uh, I was contacted uh, late last evening and asked if I would be available today to administer a polygraph examination. I was with the FBI up until the end of 87. Before that, I was with the Army. I was trained by the Army in 1972. Woody Allen did not bribe this guy, the chief polygraph examiner for the FBI, for a positive test. The third point is perhaps the most important. I discovered from this long buried New York Times column, Mia Farrow's lawyers in 1992 were in fact willing to drop the child molestation charge in exchange for $13 million. It could quote, go away if Allen just made a lump sum payment to them. Now that is suspicious. And who was Mia Farrow's lawyer? None other than Alan Dershowitz, 
who admitted in 1993 he had been recruited by Mia Farrow. Nonetheless, Woody Allen at the time refused to pay the settlement because he believed he would be found innocent, and the court did find him innocent of any proof he actually touched his daughter. However, the judge ruled for the stability of Dylan's life, Mia Farrow would be granted custody. Again, like an actual journalist, I got the actual court decision from 1994, so I'll just read from it. While the evidence in support of the allegations remains inconclusive, it is clear that the investigation of the charges in and of itself could not have left Dylan unaffected. Therefore, we hold that in the view of the totality of the circumstances, the best interests of these children would be served by remaining together in the custody of Ms. Farrow. It was noted by the IAS court that the psychiatric experts agreed that Mr. Allen may be able to fulfill a positive role in Dylan's therapy. We note specifically the opinion of Dr. Brzezinski, the impartial expert called by both parties. Mr. Allen is necessary to Dylan's future development. So, to summarize, Woody Allen has only been accused of child abuse one time, and during that time, the court never pressed any charges against him, citing lack of evidence. Two independent medical teams that specialize in child abuse both found Woody Allen innocent. Moses Farrow, another one of Mia's adopted children, who was in the house the day Allen allegedly touched Dylan, has publicly come out as an adult and written Allen never touched Dylan and Mia Farrow was the abusive mother. Yes, I dug that up too. In 2018, he wrote, When I didn't give the answer she wanted, Mia Farrow slapped my face, knocking off my glasses. That was the start of her coaching, drilling, scripting, rehearsing, in essence, brainwashing. I became anxious and fearful. Once, when I was given a new pair of jeans, I thought they would look cool if I cut off a couple of the belt loops. When Mia saw what I had done, she spanked me repeatedly and had me remove all my clothes, saying, you're not deserving of any clothes, and making me stand naked in the corner of her room in front of my older siblings who had just returned from dinner with their father, Andre. To my mother, enough is enough. You and I both know the truth, and it's time for this retribution to end. If that's not compelling enough, Mia's own lead lawyer conceded on Charlie Rose back in 1993, she wasn't even sure if Mia had made it up. I have the transcript. Eleanor Alter. Let me just tie one last point. There's no question in your mind that there was child abuse of Dylan? No, that's not what I'm saying. I, there's no question in my mind whether because of his behavior with her and his behavior with her sister uh, caused Dylan to project or fantasize, I don't know. I don't know that he actually did the ultimate things uh, that Dylan says he did. Even Mia's own lawyers don't seem convinced he committed a crime. Given this avalanche of information, by any honest standard, it is reasonable to give Woody Allen the presumption of innocence in this case. Every professional examination found Woody Allen innocent. He has never been accused of anything else by anyone else in 80 years. And Mia was shown to have strong motivation to retaliate against Woody Allen for dating Sunni. Mia had said to me, you took my daughter and I'm going to take yours. But what about Dylan Farrow's testimony? As an adult, Dylan Farrow continues to state Woody Allen molested her as a child. It's affected every part of my life. Um, you know, growing up... Isn't she to be believed? No. It sounds harsh, but memory has been proven to be unreliable. Modern memory research shows we don't actually access original memories, but instead a copy of the memory from the last time we remembered it. It's called memory consolidation, and this is why many of our own memories are skewed or subject to suggestion over time. And flashball memories, or emotional memories like the kind Dylan is recounting, are equally fallible. The NYU Department of Psychology wrote four years ago, quote, the confidence that people often have in their traumatic memories may not be fully justified. Moreover, like other autobiographical memories, traumatic memories may be replete with errors of finally persistence of and confidence in flashball memories is no guarantee of its accuracy. And once these errors are incorporated into the memory, they can persist and be confidently held for many years, perhaps a lifetime. Just ask Carol Bryant, the woman whose memory killed Emmett Till. It's why criminal courts no longer give weight to eyewitness testimony like they used to. It's often wrong. Admitted on her deathbed that she lied in her court testimony. Here's the thing. I mean, outside of a court of law, we do know what happened in the attic on that day. I just told you. But that's the problem. The court doesn't think that happened. I believe Dylan Farrow believes what she is saying but I don't believe what Dylan is saying is the truth, because upon review, all legal and medical evidence contradicts her story, and the amount of evidence is overwhelming that she was coached and brainwashed as a child by Mia Farrow to retaliate against Woody Allen, 
And that's the real tragedy, to lie to your own children, give them trauma they don't deserve, just to get back at an ex. A crime for 30 years Mia Farrow has kept the public from noticing. But this seems to be a theme, as three other children have died in depressing circumstances after the care of Mia Farrow, and which the press have curiously avoided investigating. Moses claims one of his younger brothers, Thaddeus, committed suicide by shooting himself in his car less than 10 minutes from Mia's house. The defendant is not guilty, but somebody in this courtroom is. So these are the facts. Woody Allen is innocent, and Mia Farrow is likely the real culprit. But don't take my word for it. Do your own research. Reach your own conclusions. The truth resists simplicity. But calm, critical thinking is our best defense against a public that has, does, and will burn imaginary witches. And furthermore, you can all go fuck yourselves.